Hello, printmakers. Um, we're in this video. It's going to be about two parts. You'll see the preparation for the video, or the paper, um, and then also a video on how that moves over to be printed. Um, so as you can see in this video, you, you're going to start by in the same way you would do dry point. You're going to dry off the paper so you have a damp sheet of paper all prepared and ready. All right, so the materials you're gonna need are uh, the Akua printmaking plate. Obviously, you've already painted on that. Uh, watercolor, eight and a half by 11 drawing or collage, blue tape, um, tin foil, brayer, and a wooden spoon. Exactly. Um, as you can see, we're working on a clean flat surface again, um, and we have a registration mark created using the tape, and we've gone ahead and also marked where we're putting the plate. So as you could have previously seen, we had Sharpie marks for each corner and we taped it down using gaffer tape. Um, now mark the plate location using a Sharpie or an additional tape marking. This will register the plate on the table as well as the paper. Tape your monoprint plate to the table or workspace as you saw us do. Um, and then take the dampened paper and place it on the plate utilizing the registration system as we just talked about. Um, you're going to apply pressure to the paper ensuring that it comes in contact with the plate. As you can see here, we're using tin foil and a brayer, I believe as Sam mentioned, to make sure we're getting even pressure all the way across that plate. Um, after we've done that, we're also using a bag and wooden spoon and we're getting a lot of shaking going on here because we're aggressively trying to print this plate. Um, to make sure that we get all those details that we painted onto its surface. So enjoy the, the shaky ride with us for today. Um, <laughs> so you're going to apply additional pressure using a wooden spoon, as Brett said, and a bag to ensure the image transfers from the plate to the paper. And the bag, as well as the tinfoil, were ways to make sure that you're not getting marks that come through onto the back of the paper. And it keeps your print nice and clean all the way around. Um, peel back the paper from the plate and you can check on your image and how it's printing. Um, that's basically our entire caveat for today. And we as Sam says, I just want to make a quick note that like mono printing can be a little bit more painterly and less specific. So it is really good in relationship to another process. I then took this piece of paper and eventually did a pen and ink drawing on top of it. Um, to get in the details and fine lines that I wanted. But as Sam mentioned before, you can relief print, you can screen print on top of it to get more specific and different lines. Just having these two processes or a few processes in relationship with one another can make a different kind of print. Um, mono printing is also a really great way to like play with images, um, to, to really work through ideas because you can paint, print, paint, print, paint, print, and really like, go through a lot of ideas very quickly. Um, so enjoy this process. Enjoy yourself being kind of impulsive and playing here. Um, that's really an important part of how you think about mon mono printing and the way you use it. If you're normally a painter, this is a really great way to activate your ideas uh, in, a, in a printmaking process. I'll just add one more thing before we go. Um, as Sam was saying, um, engaging with the process is half the fun. Um, and allowing that process to surprise you. Um, so I had no idea what this was gonna look like at the end. And then I continue to think and work through the different ideas of what it could become. So enjoy this, act like allow yourself to experiment um, and also be kind to yourself if it doesn't come out exactly how you want the first time. Yeah, always be gentle with yourself. Okay, thanks again, printmakers. Great talking to you. Enjoy, Bye. see you next time.